Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name's Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you about using the data folder and data files in Middleman. Sometimes when you're building a website, you need to store large amounts of information about that website, right? Maybe it's a list of names or a list of locations, or if you're building like a store, it could be a list of products. In other words, sometimes you just need to store data, right? And traditionally, if you're using a dynamic website, you could use a database, right? So you'd have this big database where you could store all of your information and you could create data, access it, delete it, update it. You could do a bunch of different things. In a static website, we can also create sort of a mini database and that's done in the data folder. So inside the data folder in our website, we can store all sorts of different types of information. You could store JSON information or you could store YAML information. And when you want to edit it, you can just go inside of those files, edit the data, and then you can actually access that data on your website. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get that data folder set up and how to start storing data that you can then access in any of your uh, templates on your website. In order to create our data, we need to go over to the root directory of our website. So I just want to point out, we're not going to create this data folder inside the source folder. The data folder is actually going to go in the same, uh, the same folder as the source folder. So inside of our root directory here, I'm going to make a new folder and I'm just going to call it data, just like that. And then inside of this data folder, we can make a new file and this will be our data file. So like I said before, there's two formats that we can store our data. It's JSON or YAML. So either one is going to work. I'm going to make a YAML file. So I'm just going to call this uh, test.yaml. So this will just be like a little test file for us to use. And inside here, I just want to store a variable. So why don't we make a variable? We'll just call it dog. And inside this variable, we can store like a dog breed. So golden retriever. Now imagine that I had this variable and I wanted to access it inside one of my templates. So I can go to, let's say one of these layouts. So here I am on this layout.erb file. I can also go to one of the pages in my website, but for our purposes, we'll just do this. Inside these body tags, if I want to access that dog variable that we created, what I can do is open and closed, uh, greater than, less than, print, uh, percent signs, and then an equal sign. And in here, I just want to type the name of that variable. In order to access it, we can say data dot, and then the name of the data folder. So in our case, or the name of the data file, in our case, it was test. And then the name of the variable inside of that data folder. So in our case, it was dog. And what this will do is it'll print out the value that we gave to this dog variable onto our site. And you'll see over here, it does exactly that. It prints out golden retriever. So I can also access this on one of my uh, web pages. So I'm over here now in this index.html file. So this is one of the content pages on our site. And you can also access data on these files as well. So now you'll notice that golden retriever shows up over here because it's um, right after this SVG image. So it doesn't matter if you're on the layout or if you're on the um, actual like content page, you can access the data uh, files from, from both of those locations. So you can also um, loop through content. And if you have large amounts of content that you're storing inside of your data files, chances are you're going to want to loop through it at some point, right? Imagine you had like a a big YAML file full of like products that you you're selling on your website. You might want to uh, you know loop through all those products and sort of like print them out in their own little navigational elements. And the way that we can print out elements is fairly similar to the way that we access them. First thing I want to do is just create an array inside of here. So I'm just going to call this like products and uh, inside of this products array, we can just put like different products that might be available on our website. I can then loop through all of these products in, um, inside of one of my templates. So inside of here, we can, similar to what we did before is less than greater than, and then we're not actually going to put an equal sign. We're just going to put these guys. And inside of here, I can do the same thing I did before data.test.products this time. And now we want to say dot each. And so what this is going to do is it's going to loop through all the products and we want to say for each of the products, we want to do something. And then we're going to make these 
little pipes right here and we're gonna put uh, F inside of them. So actually we make this a P for product. So P is gonna represent, or maybe we have to use F. So F is gonna represent the particular product that we're looping through. And then we can come down here and we can just put an ending tag. And so now inside of here, we will actually access each of these products. And so we can, for example, we can make like a list item for each one of them. And inside we can access the actual uh, value. So in these open and closed, uh, greater than less than, we can just put F. And so F is gonna represent um, each of the products as we loop through. So for each iteration through this loop, F is gonna represent a different product and it'll print out that different product. So we head over to our website, you'll notice that all of those products that we had inside of that data file are now getting looped through. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you wanna help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.